When it comes to having your own blog, you have two options. Either use a tool such as Ghost, Substack or Hashnode or build your own from scratch. But as a developer, you only have one option, which is to build your own. Because how else are you going to tell the world that you can code if you don't have your own blog built from the ground up? It's the initiation ritual that all have to go through in order to call yourself a developer. In all honesty though, use whatever you want. This is just me baiting you into the video. Anyway, in this video, we're going to be looking at how you can build a markdown based blog using Next.js 14. The home page of the site will have categories and the which will have the associated articles. We will of course be using Tailwind because who has time to write vanilla CSS? Ain't nobody got time for that. This will be a very minimal blog and that is on purpose so that you can easily take this and make it into something that is more you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and create our Next.js project. For the setup, I'll be using TypeScript, ESLint, Tailwind CSS, and App Router. However, I will not be using the source directory, so you can say no to that. For the alias, I will keep to at forward slash asterisk. Once the project is set up, we need to install the dependencies, which are going to be Remark, Remark HTML, Hero Icons React, Gray Matter, and Moment. Once we have all of that installed, we can get rid of the code that we don't need, such as getting rid of the custom CSS that comes with Next.js and emptying out the page.tsx file and adding in a simple component that has a section and a header. For this application, we're going to use two fonts, Cormorant, Garamond, and Poppins. Inside of the layout file, we can import them from next font Google. We will need to add in the weights that we will need and the variable name. Once they've been set up, we can pass them into the application via the variable names we assign them whilst also giving the entire application a neutral 100 background. Then inside of the Tailwind config, we can remove what Next.js added and extend the font family to include Cormorant Garamond and Poppins, with Cormorant Garamond set to Serif and Poppins set to Sans Serif. Back inside the homepage component, we can set the section to have the class names MX Auto, a width of 11 over 12, and for larger screens, a width of one half, a margin top of 20, flex, flex column, a gap of 16, and a margin bottom of 20. Then inside of the header, we can add a h1 tag with the title minimal blog. As for the class names, we can give font Cormorant Garamond, font light, text 6XL, text neutral 900, and text center. Underneath the header, let's add a section tag which will hold the list of articles. For that, we can add the class names grid, grid columns 2 for non-mobile screens, and then flex, flex column, and gap 10. Now, if we go ahead and run this, we should get a web page with our minimal blog title using the font Cormorant Garamond. As this is a blog site, we need a place for us to store our articles. At the root level of our application, we can create an articles directory. Within that, I'm going to throw in a bunch of markdown files with some holding actual content. The important thing to note is that the metadata inside of these files will consist of a title, category, and date. We'll be using the category in order to sort our articles into buckets. Then let's create a lib folder and within that create a file called articles.ts. This will be the backend code that will be responsible for fetching article related data. For the imports, we have fs, which provides functions to interact with the file system, such as reading files, matter, which is used for extracting metadata from content files, in our case, the markdown metadata we saw earlier, path, which handles file paths and directories, moment for parsing, manipulating and formatting dates, remark, which allows us to pass and process markdown content, and remark HTML for converting markdown content to HTML content. We can also go a step further by defining the type article item, which will be the return type for our functions that return the list of articles. Inside of a new directory called types, we can create an index.ts file and define the type article item, with ID set to string, title being string, date being string, and category being string. Back inside of the articles.ts file, we can import it as a type. Next, we can store the absolute path of our articles directory by making use of the join function inside of the path library. Then let's define a function called get sorted articles, which will return a list of all the articles sorted by date. First, we need to read the contents of the folder as specified above with articles directory. This will retrieve an array containing all the names of the markdown files that we have. We can then loop through each of the file names. The ID is derived by removing the markdown extension from each of the files. Full path is then generated by combining the articles directory path with the current file name. The content of the file located at full path is read synchronously using fs read file sync. We can then process the metadata of each file using matter and store in the variable matter result. Then for each iteration, we can return an object which will include the ID, 
title, date, and category. For the entire function, we can then return the array by calling all articles data and looping through each one, comparing the dates. We convert the string dates into moment.js objects, which makes it easier to see if one date is before or after the other. If the date of the first object A comes before the date of the second object B, it returns one, indicating that the first object should precede the second in the sorted array. If the second date is after the first, it places the second object before the first. Then if they are the same, it returns zero. Next, we can define our export function get categorized articles which will loop through the articles putting them into buckets depending on their category we can call our get sorted articles function and then create an empty object called categorized articles looping through each of the sorted articles it checks if a category key exists in the categorized articles and if not it creates an empty array for that category it then pushes a current article into the corresponding category array finally it returns a categorized articles object where each key represents a unique category and contains an array of articles belonging to it. Inside of the homepage component, we can call and then log it to see what the output looks like. We can now create a component that will represent a category and its articles on the home page. On the root level, create a components directory and within that create article a list item.tsx. Import link and the type article item which we defined earlier. For the props, we're going to have category, which will be a string, and articles, which will be a list of article items. For our component, let's add a div with the class names flex, flex column, and a gap five. Then within that, a h2 tag with the font Cormorant Garamond and a text size of 4XL. This will hold the category prop. Underneath, we can add another div with the class names flex, flex column, gap 2.5, font poppins with a large text size. Inside of the div, we'll be looping through each of the articles that we passed in via props with a link. The href prop will be forward slash and then the article ID, where the article ID is the name of the file itself and key and class names, text neutral 900, hover, text amber 700, along with transition and duration of 150. Then in between the link tags, we can throw in the article title. Jumping back to the homepage component, we can now use this within the section grid and check if the article's value is not null. If it isn't, then we can loop through the articles using the object keys method and pass in the props. Now, if we head back to the browser, we should see a number of articles sorted into the categories and ordered by date. However, if we were to click on one, we'll be sent to a 404 page. The 404 message is there, however, the font color is white. You can also see how the URL has changed with the extension name of the file. So now we need to implement some code so that when you click on an article, you get the content for it. Back inside of the article.ts file, we can create another export function that will return the content within an article. It will need an ID as an argument and will also be asynchronous. Within the body of the function, we can create the path to the article and then read the file contents. We can then utilize the matter library to pass the metadata and content from the markdown file and then remark HTML, process it as HTML asynchronously. After processing, the function assembles to an object containing the article's ID, HTML content, title, category, and formatted date, returning only the information we are concerned with. Then within the app directory, we can create a new folder called slug within square brackets. In Next.js, this represents a dynamic root parameter that allows you to create roots for your web application. In our case, we'll expect the names of the markdown files. Inside of the slug directory, we can specify a page.tsx file, which will be the dynamic file that renders an article. For the imports, we need link from Next.js, a solid arrow left icon from hero icons, and also the get article data function, which we recently defined. This file will hold an asynchronous component with props where the params property within the props object should be a nested object structure with a slug property set to a string, which is read in from the URL. Inside of the component, we can call the get article data function using a wait and pass in the slug, as that would be the ID of the article, which is the name of the file. We can then return the section with the class name MX auto, a width of 10 over 12, and for larger screens, a width of one over two, margin top 20, flex, flex column, and gap five. Within that, we can define a div with the style flex, justify between, and font poppins. Here we can add a link that will send us back to the home page with an arrow left icon that has a width of 20 and a paragraph text saying back to home. Then underneath the link, we add the date of the article. Then finally, we can add a closed article tag and for the prop dangerously set in a HTML, we can pass in an object with underscore underscore HTML set to article data dot content HTML. Don't forget to export the component.
Back in the browser, if we click on an article that has content, we should see the article. However, the issue is that there is no styling. So it's hard for the reader to tell what is a heading, a list, or a quote. In order to fix this, we can do some hacking with our Tailwind CSS library. In the article tag, we can add a class name article. Then within the global.css file, we can target it by referring the class name and calling the apply rule using flex, flex call, gap of three, font pop-ins and a large text, wide tracking and a margin bottom of 20. Then if we head back to the browser and view a written article, we can see that our styles have been applied. However, there's still some changes that need to be made, such as headings, quotes and lists. We can target the H1 tag and set the font to Cormorant Garamond and the text size of 4XL, text center and a tight tracking. We can do the same for H2, however, just reduce the text size slightly. Then for ordered lists, we can include list decimal, flex, flex column, a margin on the X for 10 and a gap of two. For unordered lists, we can do the same, but instead use list disk. For the pre-formatted tags, we can give them a background color of neutral 950, a text color of neutral 50, a padding of five, and overflow scroll so that the page doesn't break. As for block quotes, we can add a padding left of five, italic font, border left of two, border color of neutral 600, and a border opacity of 40. Back in the browser, we can see how that has changed our articles, making them easier to read and navigate. The last issue is that our images are not being shown. That's because we don't have any within the project. So I've gone ahead and added an image inside of the public folder that in order to refer to it within the markdown, I've added forward slash and then the image file. Back in the browser, we can now see the image being rendered. And if we inspect it, we can see that the image tag is within the paragraph tag. So if we want to target it with CSS, we need to target an image within a paragraph. So let's do that by setting the width to half and the margin on the X axis to be auto. And now when we head back, we can see how our image has changed with respect to the class names we added. If we view it on mobile sizes, we can also see how the website layout changes. And that folks brings us to the end of this tutorial. You can now go ahead and build a blog site from scratch and improve upon what we've built today, such as adding error handling for articles that don't exist or changing up the styles and adding a bit more interactivity in there. You can show me your work via X at Rhythmio. And remember, stay healthy, stay safe, and I hope to see you in the next video.